Now, I've had a number of questions about immigration, so I'm going to try to cover a few high points here. Your main question is, what is the proper government attitude toward immigration? Now, in a capitalist society, a laissez-faire society, I would say the government has no function whatever, and foreigners should be free to uh, visit here, move here, acquire property, whatever. The principle of individual rights does not apply only to uh, you know, citizens, but also to foreigners, since uh, they are uh, human. Of course, foreigners can't engage in force, but assuming that uh, uh, they trade or whatever, they live here without the use of force, then uh, everybody benefits and uh, there's no problem. I just say parenthetically, the government has the right to monitor for and prevent the immigration objectively provable, physical, harmful, uh, in actuality or an objective threat to the citizens, to the country. So, for instance, someone who bears a contagious physical disease, uh, a known criminal, uh, a potential uh, uh, member of an enemy at war, all these are absolutely subject to governmental investigation and uh, a, a refusal to let them in. But those are not cases we're generally uh, talking about in this question. Now, as I say, that would be applicable in a capitalist society. But what about in today's society, which is an advanced welfare state, which offers many, many free, uh, uh, unearned services to the, quote, needy, wherever they come from. And obviously, in uh, medicine, in, in hospitals, in schools, in education. And uh, uh, there's no question, factually, about this. There are no more, for instance, emergency rooms uh, in California, in hospitals, probably in the whole country, because they're filled with, largely with immigrants who get free medical uh, care. Uh, now... That is unfair that we uh, have to uh, pay uh, for additional uh, freeloaders over and above the ones that are here. But the Supreme Court has come down firmly that any welfare benefits dispensed to citizens have to be dispensed to uh, immigrants uh, as well. It's also true that this, uh, in the earlier days in the 19th century, because immigrants were offered no special incentive other than what they could gain by their own work, we got a certain category of immigrant, hardworking, self-sufficient, uh, independent. Today, while I stress you are still getting quite a number of these high-quality people, you are also getting a large mass of people attracted by the welfare uh, state and the free uh, handouts. And those people, as is obvious, are the opposite of individualistic, and they either uh, start or more probably join these uh, cultural uh, movements of their particular uh, original nation or ethnicity and attempt to have their uh, own uh, ethnic uh, standards imposed by law on uh, this country. As in uh, California schools, I don't know how many languages uh, they have to uh, teach in. Uh, it's a big battle uh, in California. Everything is uh, required to be uh, bilingual, etc. Now, this is completely wrong, but it is unavoidable if a mass uh, comes in to uh, a welfare state for that reason. That is precisely the mentality uh, that will, uh, will do so. Uh, so <laughs> there is an unavoidable inherent contradiction here. It's not my contradiction. It is the contradiction <clears throat> of the policy of the country. Uh, on the one hand, it is valid to have uh, foreigners, they have a right to travel and settle 
freely. Borders are not a proper barrier. But on the other hand, the citizens of this country have a right to private uh, 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 property. And now, in, in taking the side of the citizens, I recognize that many American citizens are much worse uh, parasites probably than the worse immigrants. That doesn't change the fact that the issue, as we have to decide it, is the foreigner's right to travel versus citizens' right to their property. Uh, now, the only solution would be free immigration with no welfare state. But the politicians obviously won't do this because the greater the illegal immigrants, uh, uh, the greater the necessity or the seeming necessity for our politicians uh, not to touch them because they want the vote. So in the total uh, context, I accept the anti-immigration viewpoint, uh, except I, I quickly add it's really useless in the long range because you cannot safeguard the U.S. border of thousands of miles, combined with the fact that you can never get political motivation of the government to do so, even under the most conservative regime, because the, uh, uh, the, uh, the illegal immigrants are way too big as a pressure group. So we are put in this position. What are the citizens to do if the federal government uh, has abdicated, and they're being robbed, I say in a case like that, you must choose the citizens. This is where selfishness comes in. It's our lives versus theirs. We don't want it to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way, but it has been forced on us that that is the way. And now we come to what can any particular state do since the federal government has abdicated, has basically resigned in perpetuity. What if you live in a state which is infested with illegal immigrants who are tied to criminal cartels? And you find that near your borders or even further in, there's an increase in crime, an increase of murder. It is uh, increasingly uh, unsafe. What are you supposed to do? Say, oh, we'll wait for Obama or the next uh, useless Republican uh, to do something about it? Obviously, we cannot. So I agree 100% with uh, Arizona, with their law. Uh, and remember, uh, counter to all the lies, they do not say uh, you go up to any Hispanic on the street and interrogate him. It's only if they have a grounds to stop an, uh, an automobile or citizen for, on the grounds of suspicion of some uh, improper uh, action. But to, so uh, to call this racism is nonsense. If you have evidence that there are a greater number in X group than Y committing a certain crime, you have every right to selectively focus what they call, quote, profiling, to try to determine uh, if there's no other way to do so, which is a given individual, a uh, person committing the evil or not. Now, for example, New York cab drivers, white and black alike, generally refuse to take a black fare to Harlem. And it's not racism. It's that the probability is strongly that if they get to Harlem, they will be robbed, whereas if they go to Staten Island uh, or Queens, they won't. That is not a collective judgment. To act on real probability is not a collective uh, judgment. Now, of course, uh, not all people who live in Harlem are guilty, even quite a number, many, the majority, it's still true that it's much more likely that uh, going there will, uh, will uh, cause you trouble, and you're perfectly rational. It is not collectivism. You're not saying this man is bad. You're saying, on the basis of the evidence, I don't want to take uh, uh, the chance. And the same exactly applies to uh, uh, Mexicans in uh, Arizona. I, I was going to give you some of the horror stories that go on at the border in Arizona.
but I will um, I will uh, stop there.